Hello guys, welcome to Top Anime Sensei. This video is the continuation video after Encounter with the Strongest. So if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start, please like, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. Yuki had been oblivious to this, but he definitely made the right call. Rimuru was his enemy. Despite his confidence, he wasn't so reckless as to take on three demon lords and Krinoa at the same time. Even without his premonition, he would have opted to get out of the fray as fast as he could. However, this time was different. This ominous feeling was because of the man standing in front of him. Yuki understood this, but still decided to face the challenge head on. Oh, do you think you can defeat me? Dai smirked. I suppose, I plan to defeat you sometime in the future anyway. I'm just doing this a bit ahead of schedule. Rain and Mize received with anger. They really wanted to kill him. But without Guy's permission, they wouldn't even dare speak. Guy was the absolute authority, and it would be disrespectful to worry for his safety. Guy was normally pretty fickle. Unless he recognized his opponent as worthy, he would crush the enemy mercilessly. Rain and Mizri worked hard to gain his approval, and if they were to cause any trouble, he wouldn't hesitate to kill them. Guy was overwhelmingly powerful and could easily beat the two of them. Laplace couldn't move a muscle, like a rabbit petrified by the gaze of a snake, that analogy seemed fitting. If Laplace tried to save Footman, Rain would fight back, even though Guy and the other primordials were outnumbered. The difference in class was insurmountable. If they were only fighting Rain and Misery, then they could probably figure out a way to pull through. But with Guy here too, they had no chance of winning. To Laplace, Yuki challenging Guy was suicide. There's no chance he'd win. We ain't on this guy's level. That Krinoa may be pretty strong, but this guy Crimson is the real monster. We ain't able to take him. We can't run away. Either. The plan that boss has, it better work or we ain't gonna survive. Laplace deserved credit for having seen a fraction of Guy's true power. Amazingly, considering the circumstances, Laplace was still thinking about ways to escape. That tenacity was one of Laplace's greatest strengths. He knew Yuki was strong too, albeit constantly hiding his true strength from even his companions. Laplace didn't know whether it would be enough to fight Guy or not. If Yuki couldn't win, Laplace planned to save Footman and run away with Tear. Yuki would surely catch on to Laplace's plan and act accordingly. This would only work out because of their mutual trust. The problem lay with Rain and Misery though. They were no ordinary enemies. Either, they wouldn't sit back and let him get a chance to help Footman. Laplace was rooted in place. He had to carefully weigh his every move. Gotta figure out a way to save Footman. While his mind was working on a solution, something unexpected happened. Hey, let him go. Guy ordered Misery. There was no way she'd go against his order. She quickly released Footman. How complacent. But now we have a chance to escape. Laplace began to think more positively. But it seemed things weren't going to be that easy. Don't worry. If you manage to beat me, I'll let you guys go. I won't touch even a hair on you guys. Guy's challenge contradicted itself. If they could beat Guy, wouldn't they be able to just walk away anyway? His declaration was troubling. The situation was becoming increasingly hopeless. He prayed that Yuki would win as he watched the battle. Yuki was the first to move, with absolute confidence in his immunity to magic and skills. He fearlessly launched a kick at Guy. His kick was sharp, heavy, and combined with a feint. At first, his foot was closing in to sweep Guy's legs, before jerking upward to land a clean uppercut. Despite Yuki being the one to land a devastating kick, he ended up scrunching his face. Tisk, just how built are you? He grumbled with a click of the tongue. His anti-skill was invincible and could penetrate all of his enemy's defense. Yet, Guy stood still, unaffected by Ayuki's hit. It was as if he didn't feel any pain at all. He had done no trickery whatsoever. Guy's body was simply harder than diamond. Being both tough and flexible, little could stand in his way. That neatly described just how powerful Guy was. Hahaha, <laughs> that tickled. I'd hardly call this a fight. Entertain me more, or I'll kill everyone here. Guy laughed as he ignited a small flame in his palm. It was the elemental magic napalm burst, a jet of flames that took the shape of a dragon, diving at his target with its long and narrow body. Its goal was to relentlessly attack the target until they were toasted, burning at several thousand degrees. Any normal man would become charcoal in an instant. This flame dragon closed in on Yuki. It's a waste of effort, Yuki shouted. Magic doesn't work on me. 
He was about to take another careless swing at Guy when suddenly a shiver ran down his spine and he jumped away. Ho, oh, your instincts are quite sharp, Guy said with a smile. Yuki had no time to retort, as he had thrown himself on the ground and was rolling around, trying to quell the flames. Without a doubt, the effect of anti-skill prevented Yuki from getting harmed by Guy's magic. However, at the same time, the supposedly nullified magical flame was still burning. It didn't behave like a typical magical flame. This one burnt oxygen, depriving it from the air. A tad too slow, and Yuki would likely have suffocated. Although it felt like a long time, it all happened in the span of just a few seconds, meaning Yuki got off without getting hurt. Had he not noticed the depleting oxygen, he would have continued attacking Guy and definitely tasted defeat. Having realized this in time, he opted to extinguish the fire, despite it making him look like a buffoon. And from Guy's reaction, a daunting thought settled in Yuki's mind. While he didn't want to admit it, he had to be sure. Without necessarily expecting Guy to give him an answer, he took a chance and asked while standing up, Why didn't you attack me again? Are you actually trying to fight me fair and square? Bahahaha, <laughs> don't play dumb. Surely you have realized by now that I have already discovered the secret behind your power. As I suspected, Yuki thought bitterly. His anti-skill was versatile and could cancel any form of power it encountered. But when it was used against arts, which were made by fusing magic and a skill, he could not nullify both of them at the same time. That was its only flaw, his only weakness. All physical enhancements aside, Yuki was still human. Even if he could fight toxins with antibodies, he could not live without oxygen. The weaknesses of his humanity, Yuki now realized, put him at a disadvantage. Guy stood there casually. I know someone who can cancel out magic perfectly, but I would still win in a fight. That's because they couldn't cancel anything other than magic. As far as I know, there is no way to completely defend against the laws of physics in this world. When you specialize in one thing, you'll be vulnerable to another. But you don't only seem to be able to counter magic, but skills as well, Guy. Looking down on Yuki, revealed his thoughts without attacking any further. His lax attitude was all calculated. It would have been easy for Guy to kill Yuki outright, but that wouldn't have been fun. Instead, Guy wanted to destroy Yuki's confidence first, and then watch him admit defeat in despair. He had figured out Yuki's physical constitution when Yuki first attacked. Guy had already seen through his quirk. He even planned a counter for it. So what if Yuki was able to cancel magic and skills? As long as he was human, it would be a piece of cake to beat him. Humans are fragile. Their frail bodies had plenty of weaknesses to exploit. Guy didn't need to think too hard to come up with various ways to kill a human. Besides, Yuki's physical abilities were far inferior to Guy. When Yuki launched his kick, Guy only left a tiny barrier as defense, but even that was too much for Yuki's kick to penetrate, leaving not even a nick. In terms of magicule capacity, comparing the two of them was almost comical. Guy's magicules could rival a true dragon. So even if Yuki cancelled his magic, he could immediately recast it without a hitch. If I just wanted to kill you, then I wouldn't have come here myself. Now since I'm here, you'd better amuse me. Guy provoked Yuki, arrogant as he stood over him. He wanted to make Yuki desperate enough to go all out, and then he would promptly beat him to a pulp. Yuki had painfully figured out what Guy was planning, but he couldn't muster a retort. His remaining confidence disappeared from his face. He started analyzing the situation desperately trying to figure out a way to get through this. His genius brain had come to the conclusion that the gap in power was light years across. But Yuki was not going to give up. He was searching for all possibilities. The only ray of hope he could grasp onto was that guy was underestimating them. I can't fault him for looking down on me when he really is leagues ahead. But as it stands, he's a bit too cocky. Yuki had other trump cards. They were the superpower he was born with, as well as the greed he had taken from Mariabelle. In addition, he had his creator, which could create whatever skill he required for the situation. Using creator could help him overcome this disaster. You'll regret that you didn't kill me when you had the chance. Steadying his breath, Yuki faced Guy again. Don't get cocky just because I've shown a fraction of my power. He wasn't being a sore loser, he meant it. If he could make his opponent angry, he would lose composure and make mistakes. That was his plan. As he spoke, Yuki allowed his power to surge through his body. He now used the power he usually suppressed, concentrating his mind on a singular task, to remodel his body to fit his will. He evolved from a human to a sage, 
and then once more to become a saint. He evolved to a form surpassing Hinata herself, and ceased to breathe. A fully evolved saint was equal to a spiritual life form, while Hinata was still being limited by her body. Yuki had reached a higher plane of existence. Now, he had overcome the need to breathe at all. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have not watched my other videos then please watch them. The links are in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.